Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Well, I hope you enjoyed our SHOT Show coverage from the last couple of weeks. We're going to leave a link below so that you can check all of that out if you haven't already. But it's time to get back to our regularly scheduled programming where I show you some of the coolest knives that have hit our shelves in the last couple of weeks. Let's check them out. All right, the first one I want to show you today is not strictly a new knife, but it is a new deal we've got going on the Kershaw Knockout. Now, normally this used to be just under 80 bucks. We're selling this right now for $59.95 because this is a closeout item. Once these are gone, these are gone, and that's a really good price. Like I said, just about 20 bucks off its original price. This is a US made Kershaw, and you can see we have an aluminum frame and a stonewashed steel drop point blade, nice broad profile. And it's using their Sandvik 14C28N steel, which is a solid performer, solid mid-range steel, one of the best, I, I think, in that, uh, that category before you start getting into the particle steels. And on the back, we've got their subframe lock construction. Now this lets them use aluminum for the back of the handle instead of a full, uh, or a full steel back handle. That way you save a little bit of weight. And they're usually able to get a little bit of color onto the back as well, but in this case, since it's a black knife, it's all black. This is a flipper and it is a speed safe assisted opening knife. So if you like that assisted opening action, this is a great knife, good materials, US made at a really good price, as I said, while supplies last. All right, let's get into some actual new stuff and we're gonna start with someone who didn't actually attend SHOT Show this year, so we haven't been able to show you any of the new products yet, and that's Cold Steel. I'm gonna start with this guy right here. So for those of you that know Cold Steel, know that they've had their Spetsnaz throwing shovel for a long time. Well, they've released a larger version of it. In fact, the handle is about 50% longer than the original, and the head itself is a little bit larger too. Of course, they market that Spetsnaz shovel as a throwing shovel. Uh, this one being a bit longer may be a little more difficult to throw uh, as accurately as the shorter one. But just like that shorter one, I think this is going to make a phenomenal camping shovel. I mean, I've taken that shorter version of the night of the shovel camping, gosh, a number of years now. I've probably had it close to seven or eight years. It makes a great tool for tending the fire. And this one here gives you a little bit extra reach for doing that sort of thing and for doing the digging as well. If you're digging like a latrine or a small pit for like a Dakota fire pit or something, at least as far as my body size is concerned, the tip of this can actually touch the ground. And if I hold my arm at my side without even stretching, I can just touch the top end of this handle. So you're not going to have to stoop as much as with a shorter shovel like that other cold steel or like with any of the entrenching tools out there. And in addition to that, you can still probably throw it and you still get that mild carbon steel head that is sharpened on all four edges. Now it's not going to hold an edge super long, but it's going to be fairly tough. And honestly, it's not your primary chopper anyway but it's a lot of fun, especially if you're throwing it into trees. Don't throw it into trees, that's probably a bad suggestion. Um, as for anything else that's different from the original right now, like I said, bigger head, so it's not gonna fit the same sheath that you can order separately for the smaller one, and they don't have a new sheath available for this just yet. They may in the future. But even if you're not gonna use this as a chopping tool, I don't really use mine as one. It's a great camp shovel, especially at a price of $33.99. It's gonna get a lot of work done, especially now with this longer handle length and larger head. All right, now for the first new knife of this video, we've got the new Airlight series from Cold Steel, available in a Tonto, as well as a more EDC-friendly drop point configuration. So the Airlight series is sort of a, an upgraded reimagining of the ProLite series. The shape's not quite identical, but you can definitely see some similarities with that budget, with that budget series of the ProLites. Where they upgrade here, of course, you've got G10 handle scales, as you can see, and they're still nice and thin, so it's gonna be a very easy carrying knife. Still nice and lightweight, even though it's not using the, uh, the synthetic material of that original knife. Also, we've got Cold Steel's triad lock, so you know it's gonna be nice and secure, really strong locking mechanism. And this blade steel's actually been upgraded to AUS 10, which, if you're unfamiliar with that, I personally haven't done any real world testing of this steel, but from what we've been seeing, it should kind of give you performance almost on, on par with VG10. Uh, might be a little bit less, might be more similar. We're not quite sure. If you've had experience with that steel, make sure to let us know. But in any case, I think it's a good solid upgrade. And the price on this is $84.99 for this and the drop point version. And that actually puts it in sort of a competitive price range to the Spyderco Indela, which you may be familiar with, kind of the in-between uh, Delica and Endura sizes. You're gonna have a similar size knife, 
Uh, blade steels should be a little bit on par. Of course, with the Spyderco, you've got their FRN texturing or textured FRN rather than G10. So take your pick. It's kind of putting it, uh, I think it's very well priced in that arena. It should be nice and competitive. As far as the pocket clip, we've got a bent silver affair, and you can carry this on both sides. The clip itself isn't reversible, but Cold Steel actually includes two clips in the package. So for if you want to carry it on the left side, there's another clip right there that you can pop on this side. That way they kind of can maintain the lines of the knife instead of having a clip that kind of looks wonky on, on one side and better on the other. So that's the Cold Steel Airlight Series Tonto or Drop Points available. All right, now we've got a more budget-oriented cold steel. This is the 1911 Flipper, and it gets its name because you can see those handle scales right there are meant to mimic the, the classic 1911 pistol. They are synthetic, but they do have that diamond checkering on it, so it gives you a good amount of grip. Very, very secure in the hands, and a single position pocket clip on this one only. It's right side tip up. So this is not a triad equipped lock. This does use a liner lock instead, but to give it a little bit more security, at least when open, you have this patent pending secondary safety right here, which you can slide forward and that's gonna actually prevent the liner lock from being pushed out, of the, out to the side and disengaging the blade. Blade itself is 4034 stainless, so it is on the budget end of things, but it has a nice stout profile. Blade stock is thick enough where you're gonna get some strength there, but the full flat grind should give it pretty decent slicing characteristics for given its dimensions. This is a flipper equipped knife. You can open it with that flipper tab. There's also a thumb stud on here, but we found this thumb stud actually pretty difficult to open. So you're gonna to wanna to stick with the flipper when you're using this knife. Last thing to talk about this knife is price and it is very affordable, $36.54. All right, let's switch gears now. We'll get to something a little bit more premium. We've got a new slip joint from Wee Knife Company. I know I said slip joint, doesn't quite look like any slip joint out there. In fact, when I first saw it, I thought it was a fixed blade because you don't actually see the, uh, the pivot screw. You just see these two attachment pieces right here that calls to mind a fixed blade. So this is the Wee Knife Company MRF Marcus Reichart folder. The steel is S35VN and it is non-locking and it has a very strong back spring here in the open position. You really have to push to get past that detent, which is good. It's gonna give you a good bit of security when you're actually using the blade out in the field. It does have a half stop in its travel. It's a little bit on the softer side. It's not quite as strong as the open back spring, which is very strong. Other nice little detail on this knife is we have a crown spine, so it's nice and comfortable in your pocket. And even though you could choke up on it and put some pressure there, being a slip joint, I'd kind of steer you away from that. But if you were needing to do anything with the tip and get up there uh, with any of these types of grips, it's gonna be nice and comfortable, not gonna jab you whatsoever. So the handles themselves are marbled carbon fiber, although shred carbon fiber is also available. And then we've got two blade finishes available also. We've got a satin finish as well as a stone wash, and you can get either blade with either of those handle configurations depending on your preference. All of them are the same price though. We're only at 175, so it's not quite as expensive as a lot of Wii knives out there, especially a lot of Wii knives that have this type of carbon fiber handle material. The shape is good. We've got slightly larger hands, not too huge, and I have just enough space on this handle itself. And it feels good. The, the smooth sides are gonna help it go in and out of your pocket nice and easily, especially with this deep carry pocket clip that sticks up above the back of the handle. It's gonna hold it very deep indeed. And it does look like it's reversible. We've got another slot here on this side if you wanted to spin that around. The back spring on the, on the handle has sort of a heavier stone wash texture. And the other detail I really like about the handle is right here at the leading edge. They've kind of scooped that, or I should, shouldn't say scoop, but beveled that at a fairly acute angle so that it's gonna be very nice in pinch grips. When you need to slide up there, you're not gonna be fighting the handle at all. So you can get good use out of the tip, whether you're doing something like this with, your, with pinching on both sides of the blade, or honestly, since it feels like a fixed blade and it kind of looks like a fixed blade, I'm automatically wanting to go to a chest lever grip and your thumb would index there quite nicely, start hogging off some material. I mean, it's just a pretty cool knife and definitely a different interpretation of the slip joint and I really like seeing it. So this is the Wii Knife Company MRF. All right, so that's the only new Wii this week, or at least the only new Wii I have here in front of me. We do have some new variants of some older models that just came in stock, so you can check all of those out at the site as well. But we're gonna go to Civivi here now, which is of course Wii Knife Company's uh, budget subsidiary, and we're gonna start with the Vexer. Now this may look familiar to you. You may have seen this called the Lynchpin before. They're actually changing the name. So this is now called the Vexer, but it's the same great knife. We've got D2 blade steel and plenty of length on this. This is nearly a four inch blade. 
but even with all that extra length, you've got that finger choil there, so you can choke up and manage that length a little more easily if you need to do some smaller work. The handles are G10, and you can see it flows really nicely with that blade shape. You kind of have a sort of a snaky, sinuous curve going on, which is pretty cool. Deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible right or left hand side. So it's gonna hold it nice and deep in the pocket, but it still is gonna take up a fair bit of space. You can see how wide this is, and it's not exactly a, a lightweight knife either. Uh, we're just over five ounces, almost 5.3 ounces on this knife. So not a featherweight by any means, but it shouldn't be too bad to carry in your pocket, I would say. You've got ball bearings in the pivot, as you'd expect, and you've got a flipper tab as well as this long blade cut out. So they're definitely going for the, uh, the fidget openers out there. You can do your thumb opening, you can do your middle finger flick, do all of that sort of thing in addition to that standard, uh, standard flipper opener. Now, Civivi makes good knives and they're usually priced very well. This one's no exception. We're at $59.50 right here for this four inch D2 blade flipper. I mean, you get a lot for your money for sure. And you get the same thing with this next knife, which is the Civivi Picaro, also very affordable at $56.95. Specs are very similar. We've got G10 handle scales in a few different colors. A few, di few different colors are available on both of these knives, in fact. Deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible. But this one does fold up a little bit more narrowly than the Vexor does, and it's a little lighter, too. We're at only about four ounces on this knife. Now we've got no flipper, but we do have a thumb cutout that also manage, manages to incorporate that tiny thumb stud there right at the top. Now, despite that blade cutout, this knife isn't quite as fidgety as the Vexor because we actually have phosphor bronze washers in here instead of ball bearings. You can still do that flick. You're gonna have to put a little bit more wrist into it though if you do. Or you've got that small thumb stud, which makes it even easier to open with your thumb. It's easy enough to open with the blade cutout certainly, but you have a little extra purchase Plus, it looks a little bit different. You definitely have a unique style with this knife, but it's still built on the same great bones that they build their other stuff. You've got that great solid D2 steel, a solid handle platform, and it's gonna get a lot of work done for you. All right, we've actually got one more Civivi today, and it's a smaller design this time. This is called the Chronic, and there are a few different variations available, and I'm actually holding the upgraded one right here. Now, base models start with a G10 handle, and we've got blue, gray, and black right now and they come with a 9CR18 MOV stainless steel blade. So performance roughly similar to say 440C, something like that. And of course you're gonna get more stain resistance than you would with the D2, which is important on a knife that could be construed as a gentleman's knife or an executive knife, which especially in this upgraded version, I think it definitely applies. The upgrade gets a stainless Damascus steel blade, as well as a G10 handle base with a twill carbon fiber overlay right on the top which then is milled away at the edges or sh sort of chamfered away at the edges. So you see some of that G10 underneath. Pocket clip is deep carry and it is very deep carry and it is reversible for left or right side. We've also got a semi-recessed lanyard point which is integrated with the backspacer with just a little bit of milling out of the back end so it creates a little bit of a pocket for whatever you wanna thread through there. The handle shape is certainly very neutral. And honestly, it kind of, I don't know if they were going for this or not, but it kind of calls to mind some of the old coffin style or uh, coffin shaped Bowie knife handles a little bit. You've got that little cutout here and you sort of have an octagonal cross section as well. You know, intentional or not, I think it's a pretty cool nod, but because of that straight construction or that straight profile, it's gonna be a very neutral handler. So a lot of different folks are gonna find it very easy to use. And the other thing that's neat about it is they managed to get a lot of blade into the handle shape itself. Reason for that is because of how close the pivot is to the end of this knife. And you can see they've actually gotten rid of the liners here at the front of the knife because what that allows them to do is get the stop pin traveling all the way out to the end of the handle itself, which again lets them get that pivot closer to the handle and squeeze that much more edge into the handle itself. You get about 3.2 inches of steel in front of the handle with this nice clip point shape, not too aggressive of a clip, so it's still very nice and usable for EDC. It's gonna pierce very well because you got a very acute tip there as well. And the edge itself has sort of a subtle continuous curve going on all the way back here at the, ba at the heel of the blade. You can kind of see it almost starts, the belly almost starts right here. So you've got a lot of sweep to the cuts you're gonna make with this blade. This knife definitely has a nice fancy look. It's gonna perform well. You've got a ball bearing equipped flipper again. Price on this upgraded version is $78.50 and the base models come in at $48.50. All right, next we've got a new updated Spyderco model. It's the Tenacious Lightweight. 
This is the same great shape as the original Tenacious, but now instead of G10, we've got their Spyderco's bi-directional FRN brings the weight down a little bit and offers even more traction than the original G10 since you've got these raised peaks that really help lock your hand into place when you're using this knife. The switch also allows them to bring that plain black Tenacious back under the $50 price point again. We're at $45.50 with the lightweight. It has a nice full grip and this is another knife kind of like that Chronic where they've been able to maximize the amount of edge you get and what's neat about it is you can see they come all the way back to the end of the handle itself. Combined with the way they've shaped the front of the handle here, you can get your hand hold right behind that edge without having to do anything like put a finger choil there. And they kind of, they just eliminate that dead space around the pivot that just everyone out there has to contend with. It's a pretty nice touch. But even despite being so close to the scales, it's still easy to sharpen. You can still hit the edge all the way back to the heel with the Sharp Maker, Spyderco's, you know, premier sharpening system. So it doesn't get in the way at all. Full flat grind, we've still got HCR 13 MOV steel. We've got a little bit more belly than a lot of Spydercos out there, but it's a solid working profile. That's always been kind of what the Tenacious is great at. It's always been a good workhorse. And for that reason, they've kept the full steel liners on this knife. A lot of the lightweight knives, they actually have inset steel liners to cut down on the weight a little bit more, but the Tenacious is a workhorse. You still want it to work really hard. So they've kept that there for extra rigidity and just a little bit, a little bit less weight thanks to that switch and handle materials. But you've still got that liner lock. You've still got that four position pocket clip so you can carry it wherever you want. It's still gonna be a solid, solid knife. Now a little bit lighter and even grippier than before. All right, next up is something really exciting. It's the Kershaw Lucha, which is probably one of our favorite things we saw at SHOT Show because it represents an astonishing value at just $119.95. You get a 14C28N steel blade, KVT ball bearing pivots, and a stainless steel handle. Now, some people out there, some of the real experienced flippers are gonna be a little shy about stainless steel because it's gonna be heavier than aluminum or titanium, but they've milled this out or skeletonized this out such that it kind of closes that gap a little bit. It's still gonna be a little bit heavier, but overall it's balanced very well. And the reason this is exciting is for 120 bucks, this is gonna be the Balasong to beat right now. now. It's not a true entry level Bally. There are of course uh, Balasongs that come in less than 100 bucks, even less than 50 bucks in some case. But if you wanna skip all of that and step right up to the first like next level Balasong, something that you're gonna be able to learn on and grow with as you start to get better without having to upgrade, this one sets a really high bar. The materials are good, the flipping action is really good. It's US made and the price is really good. I mean, there's a lot to love there. If you're gonna actually use your Bally for cutting, of course you've got that 14C28 blade, so you're gonna get some pretty good performance out of it. Nice stainless or uh, stone washed finish as well. And there's some other nice details that they've sweated as well. Like the way they've shaped the latch here, if you're flipping and you come closed on that, it's gonna push it out. You know, you can, if you're doing it slowly, you can kind of trap it in there, but if there's any kind of momentum at all, it flips right out. So that's not gonna get in the way. And even when it comes this way, there's no chance of it hitting the edge of the knife blade itself because they've got a little stop pin in there to keep it from going. So that's the Lucha. If you're looking to get really serious about Balasong flipping and you still don't have a ton of money to spend on a real premium Bally, for 120 bucks, you're not gonna feel like you're missing out on too much. This is a really, really cool knife. All right, next up, we've actually gotten restocked on the wood-handled version of the Kershaw Concierge, which of course is a Dmitry Sinkovich design, but I probably didn't need to tell you that. You can kind of tell immediately this has his signature written all over it. Steel is HCR 13 MOV, and we've got a titanium nitride coating on it, so it's gonna be nice and durable, as well as giving it a little bit more corrosion resistance. H resistance. HCR, of course, is corrosion resistant, but there are more stainless steels out there so the tie eye is gonna help with that. And it gives it a cool look too, especially when you layer it up against those wood handle scales, which are on both sides. This is a flipper knife and it is a manual flipper knife. We have no assist here, but that's no problem. And what's kind of neat about this design is the pocket clip itself. You can see it actually nests into the wood scale on the backside. So the primary advantage of that is because it's sunken in and it kind of holds your, the fabric of your pants or of, of your pocket in there when it's clipped, you're gonna have a very good amount of retention. You're gonna have to be very deliberate when you take it out of your pants pocket. So, but even so, it's not too aggressive. Like we had no problems. I tried it on my pants. Thomas has tried on his jeans over there. And we had no problems. And it's gonna help you too if you wear thinner pants, it's gonna give you a little bit extra retention. 
But on the converse side of that, it's not too hard to actually clip into your pocket either. I was expecting it to be a little bit more difficult to go in, not a problem at all. But that's the wood handled Kershaw Con Concierge 4495. All right, next we have the new Kershaw Launch 12, which of course is the smaller brother to the Launch 8, which was released last, last year. This knife here has a two and a half inch blade. Now being a Kershaw Launch series knife, there's a few things you can expect and they are all accounted for here. We've got a CPM 154 steel blade with a stonewashed finish, nice American made construction with an aluminum handle scale. And being the brother to the 8, we also have a carbon fiber inlay on the front. All that sounds well and good, but right behind all of it is a fantastic, fantastic push button automatic action. I've said it before, I'll say it again, for a really affordable price, this knife is only $95.95. That's right, two 95s after in a row, I had to check it just to make sure. But even for that price, less than 100 bucks, the action on this is just as good as some of the best automatic actions on the market today. You're not giving up anything at all by spending just under a hundred bucks on this knife. All right, next is another variant of the ever popular Natrix. Now, they released a copper Natrix earlier this year, or sorry, uh, last year I should say, maybe a bit over a year ago, I may have my dates off a little bit. But the original copper Natrix was actually smaller, a little bit smaller than the original Natrix size. Well, this year they are coming out with the regular size Natrix and the XL size Natrix with those copper scales and the standard size Natrix is now in stock and the price on this is $79.95. You've got that stonewashed copper handle construction so that it's gonna patina nicely over time and even when it's rolling around in your pockets or if other things are rolling around in your pockets because we hope you actually have the knife clipped in your pocket when it's there, the stonewashed finish is gonna help things to kind of blend in uh, any kind of scuffs or scratches and once it gets patinaed and it's already nice and scratched up, this is gonna have a ton of personality. Blade Steel gets an upgrade over the standard, uh, standard Natrix versions as well. We've got D2 Steel, again with a stonewashed finish. It's a really cool knife, deep carry pocket clip, both sides, sub frame lock construction, so you get that copper on the backside. Remember I was talking about that earlier. It's fun, it's stylish, it's definitely of the moment right now, so get them while they're here, $79.95. All right, one last thing from Kershaw this week. Not quite a knife, is it? This is actually their new manicure set, which is a good travel size companion. You've got a set of scissors here for like beard and nose hair with the rounded tip on the end, set of nail clippers, nail file, and tweezers right there. Good for you, good for travel. Makes a good gift too, especially, you know, knife guys like us, we're always kind of scratching our heads on, on what uh, gift to give. A lot of times we'll give a knife, but if we can't give a knife, we can still kind of give a knife. It's still a Kershaw. Price on these is really good too, $14.95. All right, one final thing for this week. We've got a new Benchmade variant of the triage family. This is the thin blue line triage because you can see we have a single G10, blue G10 liner here flanking the black G10 of the handle scales. Now, a lot of the triage family is catered to rescue personnel with some different types of uh, rescue blade shapes. But being this is the thin blue line version, it makes sense that it would be a little more tactical or a little more utility oriented. And I think we have the most usable blade shape they've put on the triage yet with just a simple drop point available with a plain edge or a partially serrated edge. The steel is S30V and we've got a saber height flat grind as well as a nice long swedge along the spine. So this is gonna be a pretty efficient, or I should say not necessarily completely efficient, full flat grind might be nicer for cutting efficiency but this is a good trade-off between strength and cutting ability, especially out in the field when you're gonna be getting into some you know, more rugged, dirtier situations. You can open it with the dual thumb studs, or of course you can flick it open, or centrifugal wrist flick it open with the axis lock itself. The handle is nice and meaty. You can definitely get a nice full grip behind your cuts, and there's a little bit of a hint of a ramp here as well, so if you're doing any piercing cuts, you've got a little bit to push off on there as well. Of course, being a triage, the handle has a few different, few extra tricks up its sleeve as well. Of course, we've got a seat belt cutter, which folds out of the back, and that's 440C steel, so that's gonna last a pretty long while. You probably aren't gonna use it too much anyway, um, but if you do wind up using it a lot, at least you've got a pretty decent steel there for the edge retention. And then finally, right there on the back, we have a carbide-tipped glass breaker for any of those smashing needs that you might need in the field, and a reversible pocket clip. Fold it over, but it's not quite deep carry. You're still gonna be able to get a nice easy grip on this when you go to extract it. And the price on these, US made, $212.50. All 
All right, guys, that's all I've got to show you right now. We've actually got a bunch new, bunch of new cold steel items to show you. I'll kind of be cycling through those in the next couple of weeks. But at the links below, you'll be able to see, uh, we'll make sure to leave a link to all the newest cold steel products right down there for you guys to check out. And be sure to check those things out because if you want to get your hands on any of these, there will be links in the description. Let me know what you thought of these knives. Let me know what you're looking forward to seeing here real soon. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time. No. That's your own fault. But we can't say that. But we can't say that. Surprise. <laughs> Thanks for that. Sorry. You want me to do it again? Mr. F. <laughs> Why didn't I see that? Let's start over from the beginning. Okay.